G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I'm covering a, a pretty exciting topic um, that I've just cracked, which is how to add custom icons to your Dynamo packages. So if you're a custom package developer or a custom node developer, this will probably be a helpful tutorial for you. So um, I'm starting this video as one of many, where I'm obviously uh, sort of exploring some more advanced territories in Dynamo, um, leading into things um, like custom package development and Python scripting. Um, but I will try to keep up some workflow videos as well for beginners. Um, I've based what I'm doing on this guide um, available at the GitHub, which tells you how to create custom nodes. And the reason I'm making this video instead of just helping people follow this guide is I guess one, I want to create a visual guide that helps people follow something visually with more confidence. Um, Cause I did find this guide a little bit hard to find my way through, but as well as that, there was a section of the guide um, that did not work for me in visual, visual studio for 2019. This guide was originally authored in 2015. Um, so I've recently made an edit to it um, with some help from some people on the forums. So I'd like to um, give special thanks to uh, Andreas Stiekman and Michael Kirshner. Um, you might recognize Andreas's name. Um, he's a developer of uh, many packages, in particular Clockwork. Um, and he was helpful in sharing his content in his attempts to build his icons originally. And Michael Kirshner helped me figure out how to fix uh, the workflow for Visual Studio 2019. So thanks very much. So obviously future videos that I'll be covering that sort of have a similar focus to this one is how to make custom nodes, making custom packages, um, the fundamentals of Python, so the techniques you'll need to build Python in Dynamo. So not really Revit API, but more things like syntax, data types, and iterating. Uh, so things that don't just relate to Dynamo, but Python itself. And obviously then how to build Python scripting in Dynamo itself with a focus on the Revit API. Um, so we're going to focus on how to add default icons today. There is some annotation on the GitHub about how to do uh, node specific uh, icons, but I'm just going to make two icons today. So you will need a custom package already set up on your computer. So essentially, um, it typically looks a little bit like this when it's being created. It will have a bin file, your Dynamo functions, anything extra, and the package JSON file. You will need Visual Studio 2019, which is, is available for free download and use from this website here. So you just go download Visual Studio and I'm using what's called the community version for developers, which is free. And this one will work for you as well. You will have needed to make two image files um, using something like Photoshop. Um, you will need them to be two sizes. One will need to be 32 by 32 pixels. The other will need to be 128 by 128 pixels. In order to do this, I recommend that you do build um, your icon at full resolution, um, just to get the crispness that you want. And then you can just downsample it in something like Photoshop using image, image size. And then you can just type in the number of pixels you want. So if you're doing a 128 by 128, there you go. Um, make sure you don't downsample and then upsample because you'll essentially just create bigger pixels. So always downsample when you go from bigger to smaller. Um, but that's an easy way to sort of create those two icons. I'll just minimize that. And when you save them, name them, name them like this if they're gonna be default custom nodes. So you'll have a large and a small. And essentially in Dynamo, the small icon is the overall package and the large icon is each specific node in that package. Um, your packages will be stored at a directory somewhere a bit like this. So for example, my custom packages are stored uh, at my, my C drive uses me as the user Gavin, app data, roaming, Dynamo, yeah, Dynamo Revit and or Dynamo Core if you're using Dynamo Core instead and then the version of Dynamo and then you'll have a subfolder called packages and each package as you download them typically will go to this folder unless you've told them to save somewhere else. Um, I'm going to be working with my custom package today. So currently there's no package customization here but we'll build a package customization file in Visual Studio. And that's because I'm developing a package called Crumple because um, my last name's Crump thought it was fun. Um, and it's going to be a package focused on education. So there will be nodes for everyday use. Some of them other people might have already built in a very similar format, but I'm going to be heavily annotating them and trying to use them as a learning tool. So if someone opens up the node, they can see the Python script and I'll write down the logic of each part of the Python script 
so that you can learn about Python and Revit API at the same time. And I'm still learning too. So it won't necessarily just be for your sake. It'll be for mine too, so I can go back to my nodes and look at them again and remember how I did things. Without further ado, let's get started. Um, so I guess I'm just going to start by opening up Revit and Dynamo. And you'll notice that most of the professional custom packages, like the really big ones like Archilab and Clockwork and Data Shapes, Orchid, Rhythm, they all have a custom node and it really makes them distinguishable. It's easy to tell when you're using a custom node. Um, if you look for a, like a custom node, you'll see the icon when you search. So it's really obvious when you're finding a node from that package. If you get the default node, it's just a little puzzle piece. And you will find that if you use a lot of small packages that don't really have a lot of development support, that you'll, you'll get a lot of puzzle piece icons and it gets very hard to sort of distinguish where these nodes are coming from. Um, there's obviously tools like Monocle that can help you find out where, where things come from, but uh, you don't always want to have to rely on that. Sometimes just having a nice little visual prompt is much easier. So I've just got two custom nodes in this custom package. I've got one that forces elements to be a list and one that kicks off a header row and transposes, which I call the kick flip. Um, and essentially I've just got one category for them. So the small node um, icon is going to be here and the large icon is going to be here. So I'm just going to get started with setting up a Visual Studio project. I will close Revit so that when I reopen it, it will refresh my package. Um, so I'm going to open up Visual Studio 2019. I also need those image files as well. So I'll just go back to back to those. So I've got my large and my small. There you go. So I'm going to copy these into a project eventually. So I'm going to create a new project. Um, I'm in dark mode at the moment. So if your Visual Studio doesn't quite look like mine, that's okay. I'm going to create a new project and you'll want to get a class library from the net framework. So you can just look up class library for the project type and we need the net framework and you'll need to make sure it's one that supports the C-sharp language, which this one does. Um, so we're going to go next. You can call this whatever you want. I'll just call this um, icon testing. And typically it will save to a folder like this under source, under repos or I assume repositories, I assume that stands for. Um, you don't need to change anything else. Make sure your net framework is set to a 2.0 and just go create. And this will start off your project essentially. So I'll just max maximize this. So I'm not really gonna, really gonna teach you much about Visual Studio. I'm just gonna teach you what you need to do to get this moving because Visual Studio is quite complex and obviously it, it's very focused on developers and it's not quite my specialty. What you wanna do is come up here to your solution explorer and this is our solution or as it's called. We wanna add a new file to this. We wanna add a resource file because the resource file is where we're gonna put our image files, which will then condense or um, I think, uh, what's the word for it? Compile them into the package customization file. So we're gonna add a new item and we wanna find under visual c -sharp items, a resource file. Before you go add, just rename resource one to package images and make sure images is capitalized as well and just keep the res X on the end of it. So we're gonna add that. And you'll see that now we've got this resources file in here. Now I haven't tried doing it with the custom tool specified, but the guide does say to just get rid of the custom tool. So I just usually delete that. What you wanna do now is while you're in the package file, which you can see up here on your tabs, we're gonna add an existing file. And what you'll wanna do is find those two images. So I'll just paste that path and just add them both using the control key or selecting two. And because I've named them properly with the default name, you won't have to rename them in here. So they lose their path in the package itself when, when you add them um, and then you, they have the name specified. So you will wanna change their persistence. So one thing that did sort of throw me off when I first tried this is when I went to default custom node in the solution explorer. Um, I couldn't change the persistence here. What you need to do is actually go into your resource file and select the file here. That's pretty important. And then instead of linking at compile time, we're going to embed in the resource file or the res.resx. Cool. So that's one thing sorted out. What I might do is just do a do a save all. So in, uh, in Visual Studio, you can save various pieces of the, the project at, at once, so you can just save it all at the same time. Um, I don't think you have to build, but typically at that point, I just run a build solution, um, which is compiling all the files and creating the resource file. 
So what we'll do now is just go find that project. So mine's under source repos icon testing. So this is all what Visual Studio has already created for us. We have our solution file, and then we have all the files that relate to it. So we have the resources file here. We have the two icons in the resources file already. So what you want to do is work with this file here, the icon testing.cs proj, or the um, assume that's C sharp project. So I'm, I'm using Notepad++ here. It's a free Notepad program, um, which is a little bit stronger than Notepad because it does support um, XML formatting. It, 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 there's so many more tools than Notepad and it has the count for which line you're on. So it's better for coding. I highly recommend looking into it. So what we want to do is open this CS approach file. Just click and drag it onto Notepad++. So this is the, the project file essentially in, in an XML format. Um, what we want to do is add a little section of text at the bottom above the project file uh, line. So I've basically got this on the GitHub. So this is the block of text you will need, but essentially the things that had to be changed from the original was this line that works with the software development uh, kit. Um, th th this was missing in the original one. And as a result, um, the, it failed to rationalize the path to the software developers kit in the registry on the computer. Um, so it wouldn't compile the solution essentially. What you want to do is copy this. Make sure you copy it all the way to the edge because the tabs are very important um, as, as it always is in most coding. And then just go enter from the import project line. Control V and that's it. So what you want to do now is just save it. Probably close it. Doesn't really matter if you don't. As soon as you go back to C Sharp, C Sharp or, or Visual Studio, it'll recognize there's a change that's happened. So you want to go reload all and now it's refreshed my project. I want to right click and rebuild my solution. Uh, ah, I've, uh, I've made a mistake. I'll have to go back to the GitHub and fix this too. Um, another thing I had to do to this text files um, is that there's a resources file reference that needs to be updated. See the Revit nodes images resources reference here. This actually needs to be package images. So I'll need to go back and fix up the um, fix up the GitHub after this, which I will. So any reference to Revit node images needs to actually say package images because this was originally copied from a, a, a Dynamo, a Dynamo related DLL instead. So I'll just bring this back. I'll copy the, the fixed version. Just make doubly sure it's all, all the references are updated. Yes, they are. Cool. I'll just go back and over the top of this, I will delete delete enter just to get on the back tab insert save go back reload all rebuild solution and the rebuild all has succeeded yes <laughs> that that's actually the part that i had a lot of trouble with um so it's great to see that so if you go to the bin file debug we'll have this file called package customization this is essentially what you need to add to your custom package to get the icons to come in because this actually contains all the resources embedded in there um, pre-compiled. So I'm just going to go back to my custom package, uh, crumple bin, and you can paste it in here or you can republish your package and add the file and Dynamo will add it to this location for you. But I'll just paste it and I'll open up Revit and fingers crossed it's just all worked. Hopefully, because I had it working before, before I took out my package customization. So if it doesn't work now, I'll have to do it again. Um, but it should work. And as a result, your package will have an identity, which is cool. Um, I'll just create a sample project. doesn't matter. Manage Dynamo. I'm using Dynamo 2.3 um, in Revit 2020.2.1 with the hotfix. And cool. Check it out. It's got its own icons. Um, and now if you look for one of your icons, you'll see it's got it's got the custom icon there. So how cool is that? Um, you can immediately identify your package when you're looking for it. So um, yeah, really cool. Um, and it really gives that package that little kick just to make it stand out. All right, so, um, so I'll upload some files to the GitHub. Um, I'll touch on that in a sec. So as I said, future videos will be focused on development. So I am going to be moving on from the fundamentals and the basics. I think there's a lot of videos on my channel that relate to this. So we're probably going to start off with just, just making a custom node with no Python, uh, making a custom package with no Python. And then I'm going to do a mini series or a quick series with quick tips 
on um, Python. Um, so I'll probably cover little mini topics in a few minutes at a time. Um, so things like how to iterate and how to convert data types, things that you need to know for Python in, in Dynamo, but not in related to the Revit API itself. And then we'll get into Python and Dynamo. Um, there's a lot of great resources already. Um, so I'm not gonna be trying to repeat too much of what's already been done, but just trying to simplify everything down into bite-sized chunks, because um, I'm learning as well. So I'm gonna try and reiterate how I found the learning helped the best in the end. And I know a lot of people are waiting for Python on this channel, so it's coming. Um, so the files will be on GitHub. I'll upload the entire package customization file just as a reference. Um, it's what other people did for me as well, especially Andreas Diekman. He actually has access to his clockwork version and a couple of his other packages on there. So I'll do the same just to pass on the buck. So thanks for watching today. Hopefully this helps sort of get you started in thinking about how you can use um, Visual Studio and just development processes in processes in Dynamo itself again. Um, I'd like to thank people on the forums again for helping me with this one. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy seeing some more advanced topics coming on the channel soon. Um, I make videos about two times a week. So if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.